Hello, welcome to Simcha, a celebration of life. I'm Nikki Wellman. The 16 days of activism against gender violence originated from the very first Women's Global Leadership Institute in 1991. Recently, the Israeli Embassy and the Israel South African Culture Fund brought Naomi Ackerman to South Africa to showcase her one-woman theatre production, Flowers Aren't Enough. Naomi has performed this show over a thousand times around the world and significantly contributed to spreading awareness of domestic violence. I like to say that I was chosen and that I didn't choose it. I am an activist and I was part of a women's theater group and I was approached to write this piece. And it was supposed to be a one-time gig, uh, 20 minutes. I was commissioned to write 20 minutes for a conference of social workers. And that was almost 15 years ago. And from the first time I started, I didn't stop. So I think I was called to do something that was needed. And more important, I had the fortune, the good fortune, of becoming a voice um, for stories that need to be heard. And I'm not afraid anymore that the show won't resonate because I've done it in such bizarre, like rural India or Serbia that I know that it, it works. But it always amazes me that this small story of four or five women that I interviewed in Israel resonates everywhere and is relevant everywhere and, and, and touches people everywhere because it's such a universal story. He brought me flowers. I'm here and he brought me flowers. I own a flower shop and he still insists on bringing me flowers. Once. Just once, I'd be so happy if he brought me jewelry or chocolate or even if he brought me some silly toy. But no, nope, he always shows up with flowers. Huge bouquets of flowers, roses and daisies. And there's always a note attached, to my beloved, to my precious. That's how it all began. And I, I again feel that I'm lucky that in my art I was asked to do this because I'm not sure that I would have done it by myself and that I've been able to be successful in doing it globally. He used to show up at my doorstep and he would say, here, these are for you. In my entire life, no one had given me one flower, let alone a bouquet of flowers. In my entire life, no one had showered me with so much love and affection. But for all of that love and affection, there was a price to be paid, a price that I noticed only many years later. Domestic violence and violence doesn't start from someone beating someone up, because that's assault. If I go on a date with someone and they beat me up and beat me to a pulp, they assaulted me. It's very clear, it's very cut. I go and I tell the police. But, but the thing about violence, it's about slow power and control. And it starts with clothes, and it starts with makeup, and then it's isolation, and then it's having complete power over someone else. And one of the things, especially when I'm performing for younger audiences, is really telling them, look at the beginning of the play. Think about when you start dating someone, what are you compromising? What are you giving up? And what are you getting in return? And is the other side also compromising? So we start off with the beginning of the relationship where there's all these red flags, but she, she doesn't really, she sees them, but she kind of ignores them. And she's so, happy to be with this great guy that she really doesn't notice that he's slowly taking over her life. And then they get married. Naomi Ackerman has performed her show, Flowers Aren't Enough, focusing on the effects of domestic violence for over 12 years around the world and is constantly amazed that audiences still manage to resonate with her story despite all language and cultural barriers. The first time that he hit me 
was on our wedding night. <laughs> we went to this really fancy hotel, and um, I left my sandals outside the, uh, the bathroom door. And he went in to take a shower, and he came out, and he tripped over my sandals, and he stubbed his toe, and I don't even know exactly what happened. What is your problem? Don't you understand that you can't leave your things just lying around? Don't you understand that I'm here too? Can't you be a little bit considerate, huh? But he doesn't beat her up. He slaps her. So it's OK. You know, he apologized. He said he's sorry. And um, it's the beginning of their life together. So she says it's OK. And she forgives him. And you know, there's a really fine line of when do we stop forgiving? And when do we say, this we don't forgive? And when do you say, you know what? This I can't forgive. And that's a huge question. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm asked frequently about forgiveness. And I, I, I'm not sure about it. There's also in America a big wave now of forgiveness is the key to everything. You know, if you forgive, life will be terrific. I'm not sure if victims of violence need to forgive their perpetrators to have a good life. I think you need to forgive yourself. I think you need to be in peace with mistakes you made. I'm not 100% sure what I think about forgiveness. How I waited to see his face. And, and how I waited to say to him, hey, I made all this money. So can we start a new page, please? Can we just forget what happened, please? Can we just be happy, please? My heart would stop beating just from the thought of that conversation. But um, that conversation never happened because um, he went to the bank and he found out before I had a chance to tell him. And he came home livid, absolutely livid. And we kind of see her going in and out of taking responsibility, of trying to change him, of forgiving him, thinking that her forgiveness will change him, and constantly trying to make herself better so that he'll stop, not really understanding that it's not her who needs to change, it's him who needs to change. And he, his behavior really has nothing to do with what she's doing. And he walked out the house and slammed the door behind him. And I was lying there on the floor, surrounded by broken glass and broken furniture. And I was lying there on the floor. <laughs> and I started to laugh. <laughs> I thought to myself, you are such a moron. You want to have a child with a man like this? Look at how he behaves. Can you imagine what he would do with a child? And how would you explain to a child that you stayed with a man like this, huh? And then I looked at my clothing. And they were torn and covered with blood. And I thought, how much? How much more blood can there be in this body, huh? I am going to stop this. Not him, me, right now. And again and again, it's not OK. And it gets worse and it gets worse until she feels such despair that she tries to take her life. And in the bathroom, I took his razor. I took his razor. And I looked straight into the mirror. I looked into the mirror and I smiled. I smiled and I thought, this is going to be so easy compared to what I have already suffered. And when she doesn't succeed to kill herself, literally and metaphorically, she sees the light. That this is about him changing, about society changing, and ultimately also about her changing. Michal. I'm so sorry. I want you to know, I want you to understand this was so out of hand. I didn't mean it. I want you to, no! No. What? <laughs> what do you mean, no? It's me. Come on, I know, I know, I know. I know. We need to change. Um, we have a problem. I, I, I want to change, and we need to solve the problem. No! I mean, yes. You have a problem, and you need to change. Someone once said to me that my play was like being pushed off a cliff. And I was like, oh, what do you mean it was like being pushed off a cliff? I was so offended. And she said, no, no, me. I was pushed off a cliff, and then I could fly. So that's a metaphor that I cherish, because as a performer, I 
perform and I hear the audience suffering. <sighs> and someone once said to me in the discussion, I just wanted it to end already. It's so hard to watch it, which is good because it's really hard to be in an abusive relationship. And you see one hour. I know people who lived like this for 40 years. So it's good that it's hard and it should push you off the cliff. But I hope that it'll make you fly and you know, fall down and crash. And, and, I th and, and that's, that's activism, is, is, is giving wings to people to fly, of saying to them, move, but not trying to move them. I don't tell women what they need to do. I tell them that they are worth more than where they are and that they have choices, sometimes really bad consequences, but they have choices that can lead them to a better place. Life is um, so incredibly short and so incredibly precious. And we get one chance to live this life. It should be magnificent, filled with joy. And, and, and everyone should have the opportunity to fulfill their wildest dream and love. Love shouldn't hurt. <laughs> love should not hurt. And I smiled at him, and I picked my head up, and I walked out of that room. And on that inspirational note, we come to the end of today's show. Thank you so much for joining us. And remember that you can find us on Facebook at Spirit Sister Productions Network. As always, from me, Nikki, and the entire Simcha team, shalom and have a safe and peaceful week.